Alrighty, all what's cracking? I just got done doing a live stream with you guys. It was awesome. Y'all are amazing. Uh, I hadn't done a live stream in a while, so I just wanted to say thank you already on another video. Getting after it. I've been working so hard this week, just getting ready for iCast. Big event, Guggen Bates launching and everything. The whole team's excited. God, it smells good. It's nice. So something I haven't done in a long time is, uh, is go catfishing. Trying to discover all the trails around my house and I've discovered one that leads down to the lake. And something that I've been wanting to do is do more adventure style videos that aren't necessarily going to crazy places like going to Canada and Alaska to go salmon. I, I wanna do all those things, but there's a lot more to explore locally too uh, that isn't very far, especially in my backyard. I wanna go see what's down there. I wanna go see if there's any fishing to be had. Do a little catch and cook with OSG. Strap up, get your headlamps on. Cause we're going out in the dark. Just listen to all the cicadas. They're getting excited. All right, this is gonna be a real simple, uh, lightweight fishing trip cause I've got a pretty long ways to go. First thing I need to get is a daggum thermosail cause these mosquitoes are about to bite my butt off. I'm actually gonna go ahead and get this puppy fired up right now. Put a little fresh propane tank in there. This is what they look like. I'm not sponsored by this company. No way do I work with them. I think mosquitoes are, wow. It's supposed to work when, yeah, there's a little red light. Oh, you guys can see that when I line it up with the camera? It's like a little furnace going off in there. Okay, I don't really like this location. Move. Gosh, those things are so loud. What I wanna do here is show you guys the basics of what I'm doing before I get down there and it's really dark. So taking a, a pack. A small pack. This is my running pack. I've been running with this thing for years. It's a camelback backpack. I think it's actually designed for bikers and like long distance runners and stuff. It's a hydration pack. You can also put stuff in it. You know, I usually put like cliff bars or whatever. I've kind of transformed it here lately because I've been trying to explore new trails. Some of them are unmaintained. I mean, I got lost one day, guys. Uh, it would have been a whole nother video. So anyway, I carry a machete in there. You may think that's crazy, but trust me, you haven't seen these trails yet. I've also seen water moccasins, cotton mouths, and, and copperheads, and there's hogs and all kinds of stuff. And, and I know a lot of people say water moccasins and they're actually water snakes. No, these are actually the big, fat, nasty, cottonmouth water moccasins. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to mark this. Instead of taking like a ruler and a scale and all that stuff, I'm going to mark that at 12 inches because that's the minimum length to keep these catfish so I can measure them right on the blade before they're filleted. Ironic. Also going to be carrying, uh, these are quarter and should be three eighths. Three eighths ounce weights. I've uh, got to carry a stringer. So one of these, you can pick these up super cheap. Just about any outdoor store, you can pick them up at Walmart, everything like that. Uh, catfish bait, this is the most important ingredient. Uh, it's a catfish dip bait. So if you guys have never used dip bait, I'm gonna show you how to use that. <laughs> hey, outlaw. Uh, I can't really do it. Anyway, you do not wanna put this in your mouth, in your lip, anywhere close to your face. Um, and I'll show you guys how to use it when we get down to the water. It's not something I can rig up here, trust me, that would be bad. So also going in our bag or in our tool belt, I'm gonna carry a flashlight, super high powered. Uh, it's actually really so I can light up trails well, so I'm not running into any danger noodles, as one of the fishing freaks described them. Headlamp, gotta have a headlamp so I can see what I'm doing. Put our bait in there just like that. And this is another key ingredient. These are the hooks. These are special hooks. Dip bait worms is what it says. They're not really worms, but what they're designed to do is uh, entrap all that juicy goodness. Another thing I probably need is some pliers. Got our pliers. Now what I want to do is just rig up. Okay, I'm going to get out one of my weights here. Another key little thing I need is a swivel, okay? Got to have little swivels. I'm already sweating. Just a couple little barrel swivels. Just in case I break off, I have a couple extras. And the whole reason I'm going at night, guys, is because catfish bite better at night. They're almost like a nocturnal animal. You know, staring at the Guggen tank and watching that flathead in there, he won't even move until it's nighttime. This is basically like rigging a Carolina rig. If you ever bass fish using a Carolina rig, slide that up on the line. I'm using 30 pound braid right now. Oh, there's some smoke coming off this thing. It's, it's doing something. Then I'm gonna put my swivel on, uni knot. 
Palomar works just fine too. Another thing I'm wearing is a belt knife. If you guys can see that, I, I wear that belt knife most fishing trips. I had one that I loved that I gave away to a, a guide in the Amazon. So he needed it more than I did, but anyway, that's a Mora, Mora knife. I love these knives. And then these come with a little loop on the end like that. Probably can't see that, didn't focus. Maybe next time, Sony. We wanna go through this swivel with this loop. Then we take this right here. We go through here. So essentially you don't even have to tie another knot. There's some danglers there you gotta get around, but once you get around that, it should just loop on through. Come on, don't make me look like a fool here. There it goes. And then, it, and then it's tight. There's a treble hook down on the end of this thing. So it's really not designed for catch and release. Like once they eat that sucker, it's pretty much gone. If you guys are wondering about the rod, I'm actually just using a bass rod. I'm using a six and a half foot medium action rod. This is one of the favorite phantoms. I have to dodge a few limbs along our adventure here. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm a little creeped out to go down this trail at night because I've already been creeped out during the day on a couple of little animals. Uh, it's mainly the slithery ones that I'm worried about. We'll get through it. That's why God made machetes. Throw this on like this. You gotta wear that hat forwards like daddy told you to do. I'm set to go. I mean, I could literally run with that right there. And if I needed to machete something, I can do that as well. Throw the thermosil right on there. Probably don't want that right on my face because that stuff's probably toxic. But anyway, I can hook that right on my belt and then we're good to go. Here's the real crazy part, okay? We're not hopping in the truck. We're not running down. We're not getting in the golf cart. We're not going down. I don't even have a golf cart. That's a theoretical situation. That's a sprinkler. There's the tree house. That's right, y'all. It's right behind the house. I forgot one thing. I gotta go say goodbye to OSG. I gotta tell her where I'm going. Oh, and there's my trail cam. Look at it. It's activated. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm gonna catch old Pete. He's a critter I've been tracking around here. Okay, we're good to go now. Man, almost forgot some water too. Jeez, that would've been a parchy trip. <laughs> this is the widest. God, cicada scared them. Joe's this out of me. So this is the widest part of the trail right here. Normally I'm pretty quiet when I come down here. I'm not really talking. It's not bad right now. This is the easy part. It's getting there. And once it's dark, coming back, whew, that's gonna get a little sketchy. I love trail running and one of the cool things about that, sometimes I discover some cool fishing and hunting spots. I gotta get to paying attention so I don't step on any danger noodles. This is, this is where it starts getting super thick. Look at that. That was from the storm the other night. Ski trees, if you guys aren't familiar, you guys that aren't from Texas, that's what you got right there. Hence the machete. I actually got one of those thorns in my leg a few weeks ago and it was swelling up. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a bug bite at first and then I remembered I whacked a mesquite and get it, got into my leg. Those mesquite thorns have poison in them. It makes you swell up and it hurts. And there could be hogs just sitting in there. They sit in that real thick stuff during the day and they come out at night all around me. So, uh, I do not like the hogs down here. Oh, shoot, there's a little newt, little lizard. Oh, if you've ever seen those, they may just look like rain droplets in the dirt. There's a little insect that lives down there. It's like a spider. It makes a little, a little funnel out of the sand. So when other things fall into it, they can't get out and then they suck them down. They live in the bottom of it. Sorry, I'm a little excited. My senses are heightened. Man, look at that beautiful sunset. Just in time for it. And that's where we just came from. The deep, dark woods. <sighs> I may have to call an audible healer here and get OSG to come get me out if I've got a pig string or a catfish on my shoulder. I don't want to carry that through all those woods the whole way. Oh, there's somebody hugging and kissing down here. This is, this is gonna be awkward. I totally ruined their moment. I didn't want to film them. I didn't want to be that guy. I just came down here, sat down my pack, you ready to do this catfish down here? Y'all have a good one. Hey, glad y'all got engaged or whatever y'all just did, but uh, hey, yeah, uh, be safe, huh? First step to any catfishing night is to 
find a good little sitting spot. And this stump right here looks phenomenal. I can set a pole up there. Now we do have some giant spiders to contend with. We're just gonna have to deal with that. They are everywhere. Dead gummit, these spiders are everywhere. At least they're wolf spiders, they're not too cantankerous. Now we gotta get a good stick. Not to put our rod on, it's to dip our catfish bait in, because let me tell you something. You don't want to be putting your fingers or your good knife in there. A little flimsy. Decent. <clears throat> we gotta dip our bait. I like fishing in this way, puts out a ton of scent, and it's easy. It's not too messy. It's not like using chicken gizzards. I've used those in the past. Those get nasty. You know, ants come to them. They dry up. You leave them in your truck. You forget about it. Your girlfriend gets in the truck. And what? how do you explain that? These types of dip baits, all you got to do is just seal it up again, and you're good to go. You can even refrigerate it if you really want to get fancy, but I'm not doing that. That's what it looks like on the inside. It's like Play-Doh, you know? Take it. You stick it right on in there. Stick it in there with your stick and you smash it in deep. Fully cover it. Submerge that thing. Get it all the way past the line. This is real cheap fishing too. Anybody can do this. Let me tell you something. It stinks. Pull it out, it looks a little something like that. Looks real nice, doesn't it? Now this is the part you want to be real careful if you're fishing with friends. Don't sling this on anybody because it's gonna start the night off pretty bad. Okay, so all I'm gonna do here is make a good long toss, kind of a lob. Not really a cast, it's more of a lob. You wanna get it taut, but not tight. So there's enough tension in the line, it's on the bottom. So I can pull a little bit of slack out, but I don't want it super tight, because it's gonna start dragging the bait. I don't wanna do that. And I'm just gonna literally watch that thing and that's all you gotta do. Now you may get real excited when you start seeing it. Doom, 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 doom. You need to wait. You need to just stay calm and wait till it slowly pulls down and then you pull into the fish. Now, I haven't done this in a while, so it may take me a couple tries, but that is how you do it. It's a good way to work on patience. You can also find your soul out here, catfishing on the banks. Give it a tickle. Missed it, pulled the camera away. He's interested. He's trying to figure out what it is. It's like I've never seen a, a, a bright yellow noodle like this before. You're probably gonna see a little wave motion in the rod, and that happens constantly. The, a bite will be very obvious. It'll be like, <clears throat> Any minute now. Well, somebody is real excited still about fireworks on the 4th of July. Getting it. Hopefully it'll scare some catfish over here towards me. I'm a green man right now. Hey, I don't want to speak too soon, but I think this little deal might actually be working. There's a little bit of a breeze, but I'm really not feeling the mosquitoes too much right now. So this is another way you can do it right here. You know, once it gets really dark and you can't see, you put it just right in your periphery. It's right on the left side of my face, right where that tumor was. Still is. Maybe I should put it on the other side. You're definitely gonna see it out of your periphery. Then you just grab the rod, there's a little tap there. That's literally just from the waves. Even in pitch dark, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm fishing like this. I'm not fishing with any light. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not using this light. I'm using this when I'm, rigging up baits and uh, so you guys can see my blurry green face. That's about it. Okay, we're getting an actual bite now. Actual bite. Okay, I think he's got it. He's running with it. Yep, I got him. Got him. Yeah. There we go. And there. I think is a channel cat. There we go. Now what you definitely gotta do with these guys is watch out for their spines. You just kinda grab them between between your fingers. Otherwise they'll get you. So that's all the way down. He's got it. Look how far he ate it. I let him have it. It'd be a lot easier if I had that thing on my head. I know buddy. Now you were definitely 12 inches long. I don't even have to measure you. Well he actually ate it so bad I'm just gonna have to cut the line. So I'm just gonna put him on the stringer and uh, toss him in the water. Okay, so we got one. 
we're back in the game. Put a new little noodle on there. And I've just got the rod sitting right next to me. Fresh little catfish fillets like that. Mm. Good. Okay, another bite. Let's see if this one's got it. He probably debated me. I have to put a fresh coat on. Look at that guys, a little scorpion. A little scorpion next to my bait. So, just sticking that in there. I try to coat it like I'm bread and butter. Nice and juicy, that's gonna get a bite. I am not kidding y'all, when I say I was over there taking a tinkle and this rod about did a backflip or a front flip over this daggum stump. I got a little wet spot on my pants right now, but they always bite at the worst times. I've probably gotten a dozen bites, but I've only got one fish. I think on this one I might actually try to hold the rod. It's usually within the first four minutes or so that it's out there, and then it'll get good one. <sighs> got him. I let it just sit in my hand that time. When we started moving with it, I got him. Uh, it is past 11, and uh, OSG is unresponsive. I'm not gonna lie to you. I did try to get an easy way out, have her come meet me, but uh, she's pregnant, she gets a lot of sleep, and she usually dozes off about 10.30, so I missed my opportunity there. I think I'm gonna have to walk back through the woods with these catfish in the dark. This is some Blair Witch stuff going on here. Let me know in the comments, what would you do? Would you call your wife right now, tell her to come get you, get her out of bed, or would you take the trail in the dark? I think I'm taking that trail in the dark. Just kidding, she texted me back. Yes. I was gonna do it though. I was. All right, little kitties, come on with me. Well, this is the trail where OSG stepped over a giant snake. So, ooh, man. Look at the size of that dude. Definitely don't wanna walk into that. This be OSG. Please be her. Yes. Oh, pack worked out well. You have a story? I have a story. What is it? I feel like I would have been here 15 minutes ago, but I walked outside to try to find your cooler. Yeah. And I found your your white hard cooler. Yeah. Well, right next to the cooler, there was a centipede. Oh, you saw a centipede? Oh, oh that's her worst fear. I'd I show her right oh now, but my she's. God. She's she's in her in her no makeup night mode right now. <laughs> oh, they well, give me the chills. Let me tell you something. I was surrounded by thousands of spiders down there. I bet. Spiders. There were scorpions. I saw a scorpion. Oh. There's no telling. There's probably tarantulas, oh, snakes, wait. and all that kind of stuff down there. <laughs> so here's the thing. Or I was I was about to walk back on the trail, and I was already creeped out. Oh shoot. I just realized I still have my thermocell on, and there's smoke in here. No. Don't have the thermocell on inside of the car. I want to roll your window down over there. I got two catfish. I'm gonna cook them off for breakfast. Ew. I gotta bite every cast. What's wrong with catfish for breakfast? Catfish for breakfast? Yeah. That just sounds redneck. How dare you insult <laughs> my people? So I was about to walk through the woods, and then you texted me back. Cause I was like, you still coming? And then I had already committed. I was like, I'm doing it. I'm going. My phone like turns on silent after like 10 I know, o'clock. mine does too. But I was amping myself up and then you text me back, so you saved the day. I'm glad. I would've been, I would've been scared, I'm not gonna lie. Honey, I found the centipede. There it is. Okay, she's freaked out. I'm, honey, I'm gonna take care of it. Oh my god, that thing is nasty. Ooh. Oh, it got away too. Uh, I can't I can't let that happen. Ugh. Okay, don't tell her. I kinda missed. It got away. But we're not gonna learn no. My hero. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> you bet. Take care of business around here. That's what I do. Now I'm gonna clean some fish. So I have my fish. I'm going to put them on ice 
Now I'm going to let them chill overnight. But I am happy to know that I can go right out here and I can go catch some catfish. And it got me inspired to do some other night fishing type stuff out there. I saw some gar swimming around. There's lots of minnows in the shallows, so there could be some bass up there as well. And something else I used to do back in the day that I think I want to try again is putting out some jug lines. But that's for a whole nother video, y'all. I'm about to go get some sleep, and I'll see you fresh in the morning. Made myself a little coffee with some honey and turmeric just to get things spicy. And I filleted the fish, y'all. Man, I forgot how much meat you can get off a of catfish versus, you know, like a crappie or a bluegill or a white bass or something like that. Uh, they've got like back meat, you know. I like to take the fillet knife all the way up. I've got my four fillets here and I'm gonna cook these up for some breakfast. We're going to do the old traditional southern style. Catfish and coffee to start the day. Ain't nothing better than a fishing free fly. I'm not gonna deep fry them. I'm just gonna pan fry them, which is a little different. It's a shallow frying process. I've already been heating up the oil in a good old cast iron skillet, man. They retain the heat very well. They're really good for this right here. If you're an outdoor guy, you gotta get yourself a cast iron skillet. I'm gonna flour these kitties up a little bit. I've already patted them dry. I don't wanna eat a whole deep fried meal in the morning, you know what I'm saying? Be running to the bathroom in five minutes. Fresh cracked lemon pepper. With OSG's recommendation, we'll go with a little cayenne, where's that located? I feel like I'm driving into the big city when I come up here to the kitchen. <laughs> it's like I've got my, my man cave downstairs. I come up here, and it's like I'm in the Dagum magazine. Woo, that cayenne is hitting my nose. <sighs> Grease is hot. Time to put these fillets into the good stuff here. Oh, look at them shrink up like that. Wow, with the skin on, baby, do it. Do some tongs. I need something. Right next to you. Where? Put here. That door. Huh? <laughs> the door. No, over. Where? Over. Have a panic. <laughs> Make it a cooking show. It's failing. Well, let me show y'all what happened. So because I left the skin on, that one curled up pretty bad. So I'm gonna have to roll him. I wanna lay him in skin down. I forgot about that skin issue. Now don't worry, the skin will just separate from the, the meat after you cook them. I mean, unless you really wanna chew on the catfish skin though. I know Winston would love to. Woohoo! Testing this method out here. Flip that. There we go. Oh, oh, it's going. <laughs> See how it just curled over like that? I think that's the last minute thing I gotta do. It's riding high off the skillet, it's trying to get away still. <laughs> so since they're bottom feeders, what kind of nutrition do they have? Good. You sure? Full of bottom minerals. This guy will be done first. That little guy, yeah. <laughs> we some biscuits to go with this. I agree. Catfish and buttermilk biscuits. Where are the biscuits? Not even in, in the stratosphere of biscuit <laughs> land. That's why you stay with the casting and I'll stay with the cooking. I like it. Woo! That's what you want. You want a nice golden brown outside and a nice juicy white lace and finish. I think that guy's done. I think he's ready for a taste test. How, how did I end up serving I you? I don't know. <laughs> it's like I just came into your kitchen and you got a little jealous and that's what ended up happening. Well, it's like reverse right. psychology. This is the catfish. So that just peels right off the skin, which is really nice. It's flaky. Catfish. It's where it's at. That's good. Not too much breading or anything, just a little flour on there, pan, pan seared, pan fried. That was light pan fry. Man, that is good. You know what? I got. I could eat that skin. That's good. Like a potato chip. I like how you can just take it right off the skin too. Let me fill that off. It's a little sticky around the edges. It's just a different taste, a different feel. And gosh, fresh ones like that are so good. 
just a little black pepper, that little bit of cayenne for a little bit of spice. This might be the first time I've ever had uh, pan fried catfish for breakfast, but I'm telling you, it's not gonna be the last. I knocked down these two little fillets. I'm gonna wait for these big boys to cool off, and then I'm just gonna go to town. I'm gonna close it out right here, guys. Thanks for being here. If you like this type of adventure style fishing, let me know in the comments, and of course, hit the like button. My personal opinion is I really like making these videos because it's reconnecting me to, to my past, but before I got super into bass fishing, I mean, I was on the same lake. I used to do this kind of stuff all the time, so, uh, I love it and I just feel like a big kid. If you want to try this recipe with OSG's recommendations, I'll leave it in the description below. And if you have suggestions for other ways to cook catfish, channel cats, blue cats, flatheads, let us know in the comments. Another fishing adventure awaits us soon, y'all. Thanks for being here. Love you and I'll catch you on the next one.